In 1871, Irish explorer David O'Keefe shipwrecked on the coast of a small island community in the remote Pacific known as the Yap Islands. Now, the islanders were gracious enough to assist David, but little did they realize that this would ultimately spell doom for the island's economy. After David's recovery, he noticed that the Yapese were using stones, known as rye stones. For the islanders, these stones were very difficult to procure, and thus, they were deemed to have value. So David had an idea. He would hire some of the islanders, sail them to another remote island, and procure more rye stones with the help of modern tools such as pickaxes and explosives. And so he did just that, and he traded those stones for real resources. By creating more rye stones, David essentially inflated the supply of money on the island, pillaged their resources, and left the island's economy to collapse. As soon as scarcity of the money was lost, the rye stones became worthless. Throughout history, various commodities such as salt, cattle, precious metals like gold, and even cigarettes in today's prison systems have all been used as forms of money. But the most successful forms of money display some key properties. They're durable, divisible, transferable, and scarce. You don't use a cow as money because eventually it'll die, so it's not durable. It's difficult to make a purchase with something with a fraction of a cow because they're not divisible. They're obviously difficult to transport, and they're not scarce, since we can always make more cattle. Keeping these properties in mind, it makes sense that civilizations tend to converge on valuing gold as money as early as 700 BC. Gold is one of the most durable elements. It can be divided into smaller fractions. It's easy to transport relative to a cow, and of course, is one of the most scarce elements on the planet. It's why governments back their currencies by gold to prove that their currencies have value, including the US dollar. Well, that is up until 1971, when the dollar ceased to be backed by gold entirely, and is instead backed by nothing more than our faith in the United States government. In fact, in today's paradigm, most of our dollars are already completely virtual, stored as a series of zeros and ones in our banks, never actually being physically created. So what can happen when a government can freely print its own currency without it needing to be backed by any hard assets? Well, let us look to Venezuela, where the money you use to buy a chicken weighs more than the chicken itself. In the past year, their money supply has seen over 80,000% inflation. And inflation happens right under your nose. If I could go back 20 years ago, I would have nearly twice as much purchasing power as I do today. So if someone worked and saved for 20 years, they would see 10 years of those earnings evaporate away just by holding their dollars until today. We're taught that good things come to those who wait, that we should save for the future. But our dollars don't do that. And those aren't the only dangers of government-issued monies. We've all heard of the debt ceiling, right? And what happens when we hit it? We raise it. We print more money and allow ourselves to go deeper into debt. And who pays when we print more dollars? Those who hold dollars. Only stocks, real estate, and other investments are resistant to inflation. But the least wealthy of Americans, those who can't afford to make these investments, they take the brunt of the blow. When we print more money, when we inflate the money supply, it is a tax on the poor. And who typically receives newly issued currency? Big corporations, banks. Through the printing of their own currencies, governments may be one of the single largest contributors to wealth inequality in the world. Safadina Amous, author of the Bitcoin Standard, suggests that if governments were restricted in their ability to print money and had to be more fiscally responsible while budgeting, like the rest of us, that perhaps they would be less likely to fund unnecessary endeavors, including wars. Perhaps governments would be more incentivized to engage in pragmatic diplomacy as opposed to costly, reckless violence. So why am I talking to you about money? Well, back in 2013, I heard of this thing called Bitcoin catching on in popularity amongst traders, but it was quite difficult to purchase at the time. So I set up a Bitcoin exchange to make it easier for people to buy and sell. But I didn't think much of Bitcoin itself yet. Well, that wasn't until I fell into the Bitcoin rabbit hole just later that year. It was Bitcoin that made me stop and ask, 
What is money? And I've continued to work in this fascinating industry ever since. So many of you are probably sitting there wondering, well, what is Bitcoin? Before I go into that, I feel compelled to mention that many of us don't understand the intricacies of how the dollar works, but we trust it and the government that backs it. A similar parallel holds true for Bitcoin, but with an important distinction. Anyone can view the Bitcoin code. Anyone with computer science background could verify the behavior of the Bitcoin protocol. So for those of you who aren't technical, I ask that you trust Bitcoin and the math that backs it. And for those of you who are technical, or perhaps just curious, I ask that you not only trust, but trust and verify. So back to the question, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin was quietly released after the 2008 financial crisis by a pseudonymous developer known as Satoshi Nakamoto. Nobody knows who this person or perhaps even group was, but they left a comment encoded within the first Bitcoin transaction that ever took place that read, the Times, January 3rd, 2009, Chancellor on the brink of second bailout for banks. Satoshi then completely disappeared from the internet in 2010. And that's part of the beauty of Bitcoin. It doesn't matter who created Bitcoin. Anyone can use Bitcoin. Bitcoins can be bought or sold in exchange for other international currencies like dollars or euros, and they can be conveniently stored on your mobile phone or home computer. Sending Bitcoin is as easy as sending an email. I want to circle back to our properties of money again. Durability, divisibility, transferability, and scarcity. Each of these properties is embedded in the Bitcoin code. Bitcoin is durable, as data never degrades. There are even Bitcoin satellites in space in the case that the internet would ever have a massive disruption. Bitcoin is divisible. Each Bitcoin can be divided into 100 million units, just like a dollar can be divided into 100 pennies. You don't have to buy or spend an entire Bitcoin. Bitcoin is transferable. You can send it to anyone, anywhere. And Bitcoin is scarce, as the supply schedule is predetermined. Today, there exists around 18 million Bitcoin, with a maximum of 21 million being created by the year 2140. And Bitcoin is more democratic, as anyone with an internet connection can buy or accept Bitcoin, or even contribute to its development. Getting started is as easy as downloading an application, visiting a website, and connecting your credit card or bank account. And adoption is already happening. In 2013, we began to see major retailers accepting Bitcoin. In 2018, we saw Wall Street begin trading regulated Bitcoin futures. And just this year, we've seen major institutional players, such as the owners of the New York Stock Exchange, Fidelity Investments, TD Ameritrade, and more, begin to support Bitcoin trading. HTC even announced plans to release a phone with Bitcoin software already built in. And Bitcoin is already larger than many global currencies, as it already secures hundreds and billions of dollars in wealth today. And as we discussed earlier, better money can lead to positive societal change. Savers will be rewarded, the poor won't be taxed by inflation, and perhaps governments will think twice before engaging in costly, reckless wars. Today, Bitcoin may be viewed as a speculative asset, but tomorrow, it'll be a store of value. And after that, a universal currency used to conduct commerce in an increasingly connected and digital global economy. Thank you.